It's Thursday, February 9th, 2023. Markets just closed a couple hours ago and another very interesting day. Markets across the board close in the red. Now, what's fascinating here is the Dow Jones was up 300 points earlier today, landed up closing down 250. That's a 550 point swing. Yet nobody when I was watching some of these business channels, nobody even talked about it. Nobody gives any reasoning uh, of why we just had a 550 point swing. And this has become so common uh, in these markets. And I think it's just a, a sign that these markets are broken and a sign that these markets are in borrowed time. This is not normal. Watching 550 point swings, we've seen swings seven, 800 points. Uh, this is not normal. Things are breaking. I think things have broken and I believe that these markets are on borrowed time. But what's um, just shocking is nobody today even talks about why the markets swung like they did. Why did we have a 550 point swing on the Dow? This is not normal. So let me know what you think. Why did we have a 550 point swing today? I, I, I have no idea. Now, I, I can make some guesses. I can make some assumptions. Uh, let me know what you think. But here's one right here coming from Bloomberg. Traders are starting to put big money on the Fed going to 6%. Is the market beginning to realize that the Fed is going to continue raising interest rates? Uh, is, is the market beginning to realize this? Is it beginning to realize that there is not going to be a pivot this year? Could there be? Yes, there could be a pivot. Nobody has a crystal ball. I don't think it's going to happen. It's um, uh, shocking to watch the markets start out the beginning of the year just going gangbusters, booming. And then all of a sudden, here we go again, back with uncertainty. And the talk now that the Fed may go to 6%. So one week, it's, hey, the Fed's going to pivot. Oh, we have all this hope. The Fed's going to slow down. The Fed's going to reverse course. And the markets love it. And, and we, we see a, a big January. And then now here we are in February. And the market is beginning to have trouble yet again because there is now the talk of, Fed, of the Fed going to 6%. Wall Street Journal, four weeks ago, Jamie Dimon came out and said, we may need to go to 6%. He may be correct. Uh, I think we probably have to go higher than that. But uh, this market has been fooling itself. It has been talking itself uh, into this, this rally based on absolutely nothing. From what I've heard and from what I've seen uh, Jerome Powell come out uh, and talk about, he seems hawkish. He seems like he's going to keep raising rates and they're going to hold rates higher for longer. So I don't know uh, where the market is getting this hope from. And they are no doubt fighting the Fed. Yahoo to lay off 20% of staff by year end uh, beginning this week. 1,600 workers are losing their jobs. 1,000 uh, will lose their jobs by the end of this week, according to CNBC. Here's another one from CNBC. Lyft shares tank 25% after company issues weak guidance. Where's the good news, ladies and gentlemen? Where is it? You know, I, I'll have a couple people write me and they'll tell me that everything's fine, the economy's fine, uh, I'm just putting fear and negativity out there. Uh, no, it's actually coming from places like Bloomberg, CNBC, Fox Business, uh, Wall Street Journal, and uh, uh, Yahoo uh, uh, Finance, and many, many more. Uh, here's one from CNBC, American small business pessimism on recession, inflation isn't relenting. Nearly half of small business owners say the economy is already in a recession and even more say inflation has yet to peak. 75% of small business owners say inflation has yet to peak. Now, the people out there that just think that the, that all this is is negativity and it's fear and it's it's doom uh, look, I I'm just the messenger. I'm just reporting what nearly half of all small business owners are saying right now. And who would know better than the small business owner? I, I think we get a better uh, indicator of what's happening in the economy by talking to the small business owner, not somebody in Washington, not a politician, not somebody in, in the central bank, but a small business owner. These people are plugged in. These people will tell you what's really happening. 69% uh, of small business owners said 
They are very concerned. And this is why you should be very concerned. 75% said inflation will continue to rise. 3% said the state of the economy is excellent, while 47% said the state of the economy is poor, with 34% saying that the economy is fair. My heart goes out to the small business owners. We're losing so many of them. And have you noticed, you know, especially out here where I live in Southern California, um, being in San Bernardino, Riverside County, um, Orange County, LA County, S San Diego, all there are so many cities look the same. They have the Walmart here, the Costco over here, the McDonald's on this corner, Starbucks over here, uh, Taco Bell over here. So many cities, at least in Southern California, look the same. It's the same stores, it's the same restaurants. And we're seeing less and less small businesses. They just cannot make it. And it's really, really, uh, really sad to watch this take place. I don't want to live uh, in a country where it's just all corporate, where it's all corporate restaurants, where it's all corporate retail. It's going to be, I, I, I think, um, a real sad place to be. And that's the direction we're heading. So it'll be, you, you know, self-checkout. It'll be robots uh, making your lunch. It'll be drones delivering packages to your house. And it's going to be the same big box stores and the same fast food restaurants. And you won't have a choice. You don't have the options. And at that point, they can charge you whatever they want. They can give you the lowest quality food and charge you the most for it because you don't have options. You don't have a choice. And it's really sad to see that that's where we're heading. And in most cities right now, we're there. We are there. Amer so, so American small business, uh, they're telling you right now where this is all going. And they're telling you that inflation has not peaked yet. And that's concerning. That really is. How long... Uh, can the average person hang on? How much longer can the existing small businesses hang on? I, I, I don't know. I really don't. But we are really uh, watching the obliteration uh, of this economy take place. Uh, and it's, it's really sad to watch it. I, I don't even have the words to express uh, how I feel about what is happening right now. And people losing their jobs, people losing their businesses. You know, we hear uh, you know, so much about tech and all the layoffs in tech, but we don't hear about what's happening in small business. And we don't hear anything about the hundreds of thousands of small businesses that have perished over the last couple of years um, when we had the health crisis and we had the, the global shutdown. Uh, hundreds of thousands of small businesses gone. Yet Walmart stayed open, Costco stayed open, McDonald's stayed open. That was that was okay. Uh, I want to shift gears here for a minute. Uh, I, I I I got an order today. Uh, some Speed Cross, I, and this is really um, something to me that is very important. We talk daily about preparations, having security, having food, water, uh, having extra firewood, charcoal, having extra propane. Um, how about an extra pair of good shoes? I got these. Uh, these are uh, Speed Assault 2s from Solomon. J these just came in about an hour ago. I'll let you check those out. I don't know if the camera picked those up. But it is so important, ladies and gentlemen, in, in my humble opinion, to have a good pair of shoes, a good tread. Um, these are, I think, about 11.9 ounces, very, very light, very breathable. In my environment out here in the heat and the desert, it's very important to have something that, that dries quickly. You can throw these in the washer too, wash them. They have a nice insole. But I, lo I love the tread on these, and they're super, super light. They breathe very, very well, and they dry out. If they get wet, they dry out. Now, if you need something that's waterproof, they have a lot of other options. And they, ha they have a lot of different options when it comes to performance shoes and boots. Uh, those are the Assault 2s. These are the Assault 1s that I've had for four years, and I'm still wearing them. I wore them to the gym today, but they're getting really worn out. But four years, I've worn these things so much, uh, training at the range, the gym, uh, they've been to uh, Texas multiple times, they've been everywhere, four years, I'm still gonna wear them. Uh, but I, I wanted to bring it up today because it's so important, it's something uh, that, that I think is extremely, extremely uh, important in your preparations is having a good pair of shoes. If you need to fight, if you need to run, uh, 
if you need to climb, if you need to, whatever, you need to hunt, whatever you need, you need a good pair of shoes. And I love Solomon. They don't pay me a dime, but I've been wearing Solomon's for four or five years now at least, uh, probably five or six years. Fantastic shoe, they last forever. And it's so, I mean, your feet, it's like putting tires on a car. Um, you're gonna get no performance with cheap, crappy tires out of a performance car. And if you need performance, if you're worried about things that are coming, things about happening, uh, if you're, you're thinking, hey, you may have to deal with force, you may have to move quickly, uh, you may be dealing with different terrain, get yourself a good pair of shoes and, and make sure you have them. It's so important. Uh, again, you know, if you're ever confronted, if you ever have to deal with force, you don't wanna be in a pair of penny loafers, ladies and gentlemen. You don't wanna be walking around in Crocs. You want some real shoes. Uh, so get yourself the essential things you need right now today. Uh, these just came in. Uh, and I think, you know, something we don't talk about very often. Again, we talk about food and water and gold and silver and security. Uh, and we've talked about a lot of other things. Get yourself a tourniquet, get yourself a first aid or trauma kit, get yourself a good pair of shoes, good pair of boots. So important. So I feel so good that these came in today. So, so good. And your feet will thank you. Uh, it's just so important. But uh, I wanna close with one last article. And again, we're gonna shift gears here to something else. We talk about, many of you, you, myself, realize and talk about spiritual warfare, that we are dealing uh, now in a time uh, uh, of not just physical threats, but spiritual threats. Uh, we are dealing with spiritual warfare. And if you really believe what is coming, if you believe that a collapse is coming, uh, take a look at the evil that is taking place right now, whether it's the crime or it's the destruction of the U.S. economy. Uh, it, 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 just take a look at what is going on. Take a look at what is on your television. Listen to what is in music today. Uh, Sunday, February 5th, we had the Grammys. I didn't watch it, could care less, but uh, there was a video floating around. This hit the news quite a bit. Many of you probably already uh, heard. Uh, Sam Smith and Kim Pateras. I'm gonna say Pateras. Uh, sang a song at the Grammys uh, called Unholy. And this song, I, I watched the video a couple times. Um, they're in cages, they got demons running around with horns. Uh, Sam Smith, I have no idea who he is. He's got a hat on with demon horns sticking through the hat. Everybody's in red, there's fire everywhere. And they're singing uh, about uh, being unholy. Uh, no doubt, we are in a spiritual war. There is no doubt that demons are running among us. And ladies and gentlemen, be careful what your kids are listening to. Be careful what your kids are watching on television, what they're doing on a computer, because people like Sam Smith and Kim Pateras, if that's her name, Patris, Pateras, whatever, um, these are no doubt very unholy people. This music is extremely unholy. Uh, and these people are tapping into a very, very evil, dark energy. And we watch the decimation of this economy, we're watching the decimation of morality, and it's gonna get much, much worse. And I believe we're gonna see things we never ever thought we would ever see, and they will be unholy things. And when I watch a performance like this, uh, satanic, it's evil, it's disturbing, uh, it wakes me up and it makes me realize that there are things we can't see. There are things that we're fighting that are not physical, they're spiritual. There are dimensions that are opening that the average person doesn't realize. People are playing with things here. They're playing with fire. And, and people like Sam and Kim, they have no idea what they're playing with and they have no idea where they're going. And that's really sad. And I pray for these people, but they're gonna influence a lot of people, especially your kids. And um, a lot of people are gonna go to a very, very bad place because they think it's, cool to be unholy. They think that uh, tapping into dark power, that, that that's the most incredible power there is. Think about where these, how these people get so far ahead in the entertainment industry and the music industry. They're tapping into a very dark energy, uh, witchcraft, the occult, things like that. My advice today as I close, tap into the most powerful energy there is, and that's God. Tap into the light. 
There is no energy more powerful than God. The dark energy, the black light, the evil, these people might get the reward here on earth, but it's very, very short lived. Know where you're going after this, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, eternity is forever. These people are never going to experience eternity. They're going to experience something very unholy, uh, very hellish. And I feel sorry for these people. I really do. But in the meantime, they are influencing very uh, young people. They're influencing very uh, weak minds. And a lot of people are going to pay the price for following these people. So be very, very careful who you're listening to, who your kids are listening to. Uh, we are now in a spiritual war. It's not just economic and financial, but it is spiritual. And we have to realize that, that there are things we don't see. There are dimensions opening up with very evil things coming out of it. So tap in. Use your resources, ladies and gentlemen. Put the odds in your favor. Tap into the most powerful energy in the universe. That is the man upstairs. That is God right upstairs. Tap into it and use it. This dark energy is weak compared to what you and I can tap into and what we are tapping into. Uh, pray to God for direction, for strength and guidance. He is the Almighty. These people don't understand that. They just want to be rewarded right now. And they have no understanding how powerful the energy of God is. And they have no idea that they've just sold their souls. So don't sell your souls, ladies and gentlemen. Money and fame is not worth it. There's a lot of sellouts out there. People that will do anything, they will say anything, they will promote anything for money. They are sellouts. And these people right here, they sold their souls to the devil for money and fame. We're not going to do that. We're here. We will be tested and we will be strong and we will do as God says. God bless every one of you. Stay strong. Pray for this country. And please comment down below. Share these videos. Give, it, uh, give this video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe. Talk to all of you soon.